Good morning, it's Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Weeping While the Harps Are Silent, and our scripture's Psalm, chapter 137. Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept as we thought of Jerusalem. We put away our harps, hanging them on the branches of poplar trees, for our captors demanded a song from us. Our tormentors insisted on a joyful hymn. Sing us one of those songs of Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a pagan land? I kind of know how the psalmist felt. Captured, caught, defeated, deflated of any hope that the future would be better. There are millions of scenarios you could draw from the history of human experience to match the pathos of a soul caught in weeping, unable to sing or even manage a faint shadow of a smile. All tragedy and even humor arises out of the difficulties of life. It's not possible for me to talk about trouble without remembering what Job said, that we humans are born for it, just as certainly as sparks fly upward from a fire. Each week, in untold numbers of churches across the world, hands are raised to call out a name in prayer. These requests are like the communication of the compassion of Christians for believers and unbelievers alike. We pray for all sorts of illnesses, surgeries, accidents, and war victims. We pray for a myriad of life's mayhem and mourning, and then we'll sing a hymn, often a joyful one. The point is, nobody likes to stay in the dark too long. We want to be lifted by brighter thoughts and possibilities. And thus it ever is. We pray against the dark, drawing hope against the extant shadows. But sometimes our darkness sings a joyful song as if it were a funeral dirge. We know the words, but we've sadly lost the joy of the melody. According to the psalmist, it was worse than that for the former residents of Jerusalem. They'd been defeated politically their homeland decimated by the unstoppable armies of Babylon, and all their young people carried off to the enemy's homeland to serve as slaves. Well, not much to celebrate there. It was time to hang the harps on the tree branches. There would be no happy songs with which to sing and dance. Life was going to be one long, dreary treadmill. The only relief would be the graveyard. That certainly would not be the advertisement you're looking for on a travel brochure. Jeremiah understood the national mood of the captives and their weeping. It's not stretching the truth when I say most Christians understand that profile in our day. Even though we still live in a land of relative prosperity and personal freedom greater than many countries in the world, we still celebrate remnants of a Christian national heritage. However, truth be told, we can also see the gathering storm clouds, a darkening horizon of godlessness in this worldly culture. We've moved past the God is dead stage of the 1960s to the next worse stage. We've entered the age of God is irrelevant. And, God help us, if that's an accurate forecast, we are in the days of Noah, just waiting for the flood of judgment's hammer to fall. For you today, if there's one thing I've learned about dark times, it's that it's proof that God's promises are true and always kept. It matters little what cultural trends want to proclaim. God is never irrelevant. He is patient, but even that will end someday. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.